Alzheimer's is a neurodegenerative disease that affects everyone. My name is Leonardo Tue, Mayo Clinic, and welcome to this week's installment of The Broke Med Students. In this episode, we'll be discussing Albert Alois' battle with Alzheimer's. Albert Alois was born on April 1st, uh, 1st 1949, to his father, Albert Al Alois, and his mother, Betty Betterson. During his time with us on this earth, he's, he made many great contributions in researching and studying Alzheimer's disease. He was also a dedicated World War II veteran, an honorary recipient of the Victoria Cross for taking a bullet to the head for his fellow comrade, a Nobel Peace Prize recipient, Pulitzer Prize uh, recipient for his memoir about bullies hitting him over the head with textbooks, and an Oscar uh, Prize winner uh, for the best stunt person. Albert passed away on April 20th due to kidney failure when he forgot to take his kidney medication. Albert passed away uh, in the hospital alongside his loved ones at precisely 4.20 p.m. Today we have uh, Tyler Sun from WebMD here to discuss the story alongside me. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sun. Thanks for having me, Dr. Sui. You know, I'm actually a huge fan of Dr. Albert's work, as you are, of course. His work has shed light on the workings of this disease, and his work researching it have led to many treatments for Alzheimer's. Thank you, Dr. Sun. Let's dive into this amazing case now, shall we? Right. Okay. So from Albert's patient files, we can see that he was 60 when he first diagnosed himself with Alzheimer's. Throughout his life, he was paranoid with getting it, so he hired up, uh, so he set up, uh, wired up several hidden cameras uh, across all over his house, and hired someone to follow him around and take notes of his daily routine. Every day, he would review the footage and notes and uh, examine them thoroughly. Uh, and like as if he he was his own patient. It's amazing how he kept up with this, given he forgot a great many things. It must have been difficult. Yes. As a result of his long research of himself, we have a full recount of his struggle with Alzheimer's. From his book, we saw that he suffered from memory lapses. In one instance, he forgot the two AV when expanding a plus b squared. It's terrible. I know it's common elementary mistake. When uh, writing his Pulitzer Prize winning uh, memoir, it took him two years to finish the 10 page memoir because he kept rewriting the same page over and over again. It's terrible. I mean, even though it resulted in a masterpiece, it was still. It was difficult for him. It was him. difficult for him. That's yeah. right. These are clear indications of Alzheimer's, am I right? You are correct. So, what are the specific symptoms of Alzheimer's disease? Well, the most common symptom related to Alzheimer's would have to be memory loss. Every day, memory lapses are normal. Say you forgot where you left your phone, or you couldn't remember where you parked your car. But the difference is that the memory loss associated with Alzheimer's is much more severe and progressively worsens. So, uh, his patients may repeat statements and questions unaware that they've already posed uh, said question or statement. They may routinely, routinely misplace possessions, often putting them in, in logical locations, getting lost in familiar places, forget family members and everyday objects, have trouble finding uh, the right words to identify objects, express thoughts or take parts in conversations. Uh, these are only some effects uh, of the symptom of memory loss. So, another... Right. So Another prominent symptom of Alzheimer's disease is the deterioration of the ability to think, reason, and make judgments or decisions. Patients may have trouble concentrating and thinking, especially about abstract concepts like numbers. Um, they may perform um, performing once routine activities such as planning and cooking a meal or playing a musical instrument may become a struggle as the disease progresses. And at a certain point into the advancement of the disease, um, the, the performance of basic tasks such as dressing and bathing may be completely forgotten. Oh. Patients may also experience changes in the personality and the um, behavior, and that alters the way they act and how they feel. So basically this may result in symptoms such as depression, apathy, social withdrawal, mood swings, distrust in others, irritability and aggressiveness, changing in sleeping habits, wandering, loss of inhibitions, delusions and delusions such as believing something has been stolen. Oh, right. So just keep in mind that increasing forgetfulness or mild confusion are the only noticeable symptoms of Alzheimer's disease in its early stages, and, at, and the rate at which these symptoms worsen varies from person to person. 
but over time you will uh, lose more and more of your memory, especially your recent memories. And those are the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. Wow, yeah. So let's go and move down to the like, causes, which is obviously very important for our, our viewers to try to stay healthy. Uh, so basically anyone can get Alzheimer's. It is a common misconception that only elderly people get the neurodegenerative disease. In reality, anyone can get it. It's also worthy to note that 5 to 8% of Alzheimer's patients suffer from insomnia, insomnia or anorexia. 20% suffer from delusions and psychotic behaviors. And a further 20% have Alzheimer's that coexist with agitations. So, so yeah, studies have shown that actually a depressed mood can uh, a, a parallel with mental decline. And in Albert's case, he suffered from an abundance of head trauma during his lifetime. So scientists believe that Alzheimer's is caused by a combination of genetic, lifestyle, and environmental factors that affect the brain over time. So some of these uh, factors may include head injury, parental age at time of birth, uh, depression, lower educational achievement, right. such as, you know, getting a 78 on a uh, AP Cal test. Oh my. I know. That's terrible. That's absolutely horrid. So, and also smoking. And so, uh, basically, Alzheimer's disease damages and kills brain cells, which damage the connections formed in the brain by neurons, and this will effectively result in brain shrinkage. Scientists have deduced two major hallmarks of this disease. One being plaques, uh, the collection of beta amyloid, uh, amyloid on the outside of brain cells, that is one suspected cause of Alzheimer's, and the other being tangles of uh, tau protein, which are supposed to transport nutrients. Uh, it's when they basically twist into abnormal uh, tangles inside brain cells, leading to failure of the transportation system, which uh, if the brain doesn't have enough nutrients, uh, the brain cells will die, which may lead to Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's right. Now we now, move on to treatment, right? Treatment, right. Yeah. So, unfortunately, there is no known cure for Alzheimer's. However, there are drugs that can help alleviate the symptoms of Alzheimer's and decelerate the um, development of the disease and its subsequent loss of cognitive function. These drugs are usually split into two categories. Well, one of them being chlorinesterase inhibitors and the other one is... Is memantine or otherwise known as Namenda. Uh, I myself am a chlorinesterase uh, specialist. So specialist? Yeah, I can talk about that. So it basically, chlorinesterase inhibitors, they basically provide slight improvement by increasing levels of cell-to-cell -cell connections, cell-to-cell uh, -cell communication by replenishing neurotransmitters in the brain that are depleted by Alzheimer's disease. And about the, and also, but you know, it should be noted that people with cardi cardiac conduction disorders, uh, it may be a danger to them as chlorinesterase inhibitors may result in a slower heart, heart rate, rate and heart block. Heart block. Wow. So uh, they can, yeah, they can also improve neuro uh, psychiatric symptoms such as agitation or depression. Depression. Yeah. Right, so the other type of drug, memantine, or sometimes referred to as namenda, interferes with the degeneration of uh, glutamate and enhances hippocampal function in the remaining neurons. Right. So, uh, and it is sometimes yeah. used in uh, combination with uh, chlorinesterase uh, inhibitor. Uh, however, there is also non-drug interventions for Alzheimer's disease. Because uh, skills and habits learned early in life are among the last abilities to be lost as the disease progresses, such as the ability to read, dance and sing, enjoy old music, engage in crafts and hobbies, and tell stories, capitalizing on these abilities can foster successes and maintain quality of life, even into the moderate phase of uh, the disease. Right, so drugs are not always the only type of treatment. Yes, there are other interventions that can be used. Right. So, well, that's all the time we have for today, folks. To end off the show, let's do a little recap of Alzheimer's disease. So, Alzheimer's disease is a disease that affects everyone, and it is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. Classified as a neurocognitive disorder, typical symptoms of Alzheimer's disease include a decline in the ability to think and reason, to make judgments and uh, uh, decisions, to plan or perform common tasks, uh, changes in personality and uh, the behavior, and of course, memory loss. It is also important to know that in that some cases, mental illnesses can mask Alzheimer's uh, disease. And when and it's important to keep in mind when diagnosing a patient, 
that, that you uh, look for traces of Alzheimer's disease. And also remember that there is still no known cure for Alzheimer's, but hopefully one day, with the advancement of modern day medicine, we can end Alzheimer's for good and help people Albert, like yeah, right. people like Albert get back on their feet. Yeah. Right. So uh, my name is Leonardo Tsui, Mayo Clinic. And I'm Tyler Sun from WebMD. This is Broke Med Students, and we'll, and we'll see, see you, you next week. week. Thank you. Oh, there we go.